The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo, book review. So this is yet another book that I've, re I've read now where the Hollywood version of this is much more popular than the book itself. Or actually I should say the Hollywood versions because it's been remade so many times. Before I read this book, I've seen the Disney version and I saw the old 1939 version. Uh, the 1939 version, as well as I can remember it, and I saw it back when I was in middle school, so the, the memory is a little bit foggy here. As far as I can remember it, it sticks very closely to the original story. The Disney version was very inaccurate, but I, I guess no surprise there. Uh, you know, actually, usually I hate it when people criticize Disney movies for accuracy. Like, I thought that whole controversy about how Pocahontas wasn't historically accurate was ridiculous because what do you expect? It's a Disney animated movie. But still, it's interesting here. In the case of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, the character of Phoebus, who in the Disney version is the dashing hero of the story, in the novel is a really a cold-hearted jerk who tries to seduce Esmeralda and then does not even try to save her when she is falsely arrested for his attempted murder. I'm surprised they changed the character so dramatically. I mean, that's not just tweaking the novel a little bit. That's going in the complete opposite direction of the whole novel. As opposed to the movies, the plot of the novel is actually less about the hunchback and more about Esmeralda and her lovers. In fact, I'm given to understand that in the French version of the story, the, the original title of the novel, the word hunchback isn't even in the French title. I think it's just called like the Cathedral of Notre Dame. I had recently read I Am Charlotte Simmons by Tom Wolfe, which is kind of a, a story about a girl who falls passionately in love for a jerk who doesn't care for her. And it's interesting the parallels to The Hunchback of Notre Dame because again here we have a story about a girl who falls passionately in love with some jerk who doesn't care, who doesn't care about her. But in the case of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, there's not a very happy ending. It's a sad story, and there are a lot of pointless, tragic deaths. But there's also a lot of humor in it as well. Uh, the humor is mostly towards the beginning, but, but it does kind of pop up throughout the book. Most of the humor kind of comes through the narration, the kind of dry, sarcastic writing style. It reminded me a bit of uh, Charles Dickens' narration in A Tale of Two Cities. Now, there are a lot of digressions in this book on the architecture of 14th century Paris. I was somewhat prepared for this because I've read Les Miserables, so I know Hugo, Hugo will go off on these huge digressions, so I was ready for it. Uh, also, like Les Miserables, there's a lot of themes about social justice and the plight of the unfortunate. And near the end, there's a popular rebellion, which reminded me a little bit of the popular rebellion in Les Miserables. Uh, I'm not a French historian, but I wondered if Hugo was maybe kind of taking 19th century politics and imposing them on 14th century Paris, but I don't know.